Hello YouTube, if you've got nothing better to do than to watch a man burn wood to extract chemicals out of it, then I welcome you. This is the right video for you. Because today we're going to be burning twigs to extract potassium salts out of them. The final result of this will be potassium hydroxide or carbonate, both of which are useful in organic synthesis. So, intro aside, let's begin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to make a campfire. A successful one, that is. So for this procedure, you need to collect the ash of the campfire after it's not burning. You should ideally do this procedure in like a container of some kind, much like this barbecue which I have. Not because of some safety concern, but because quite literally you just need to collect the ash. And if you're doing it over dirt, then there ain't no way you're collecting all the ash. So yeah, do it in something like that. I don't really care what. You can use a, a cement slab. That will work. Yeah, I have no idea how to light this thing. I think I need something more flammable to light that. Uh, typically, people use a kerosene for lighting fires. I, however, don't have kerosene, so I need to settle on something a little more household friendly. Just nice. <laughs> I think it worked. So for this process, all you really need is just something which once was wood. So you can use planks, you can use like twigs, you can use logs, or you can use ch wood charcoal. Damn, my mixtape is out of control. Huh, who knew? Isopropyl alcohol is very good for igniting fires. And yourself, apparently. So what we're after is this white stuff over here, not the wood charcoal which is being produced. So make sure you also do this on a non-windy day, because of the wood ash will just get blown away. So now that everything has cooled down, I'll just collect the wood ash inside of a piece of paper and transfer them into my house. So now we gather all of the wood ash produced, um, it was probably not a good idea to keep this in something as flammable as paper, and what we need to do is separate all of the big chunks like this from this mixture because these big chunks are mostly just pure charcoal, and what we're after is the ash. So I filtered everything out, and the final result, which you want, is a powder like this. You can leave pieces of bark which are half combusted like this, and they won't harm the mixture, much like the pieces of wood. But it's just better to have everything as a powder. Okay, yeah, now just get all of this stuff and pour it into the flask. So now what you want to do is you want to mix this thing around occasionally. Just let everything soluble and dissolve there nice and easy. So yeah, come back to this after 24 hours when everything will be dissolved. 24 hours later. So the flask was left alone for 24 hours and the middle layer has become a foggy white color. The ash and the charcoal floating at the top and bottom are still there. Usually, during this process, the liquid itself becomes a brownish color. However, this happens due to organic impurities which get dissolved inside of the liquid. The fact that my liquid isn't a brownish color only signifies there's no organic impurities dissolved inside of it. It doesn't mean anything about the amount of potassium which has dissolved inside the water now. What I'm doing now is I'm filtering the solution for the solid chunks and the impurities inside of it. I'm just using a regular coffee filter. You can use a coffee filter as well. Um, the reason a coffee filter works for this one is because it won't dissolve for this exact experiment because the potassium concentration is so low. Now that I filtered over the water, I just transferred it inside of this pot. Now what I'm going to do is just boil the pot until all of the water evaporates and I'll be left with, hopefully, so pure sodium hydroxide. Ideally, the water, when you put your fingers in it, it should feel a bit slippery, much like when you are touching salt water. After I boiled everything off, the result which I got is just a little bit of white powder at the bottom. The powder can be brown, depending if the solution was brown itself. 
So I scraped everything from the inside of the pot, and this is the result which I got. A small amount of powder, which looks like this. Um, the brown color, I couldn't notice it before due to the metal, is from the few amounts of organic impurities which are actually in this. I didn't get much, as I was just burning it from twigs. Now, I'll just add some water to this stuff, and let everything dissolve in there quite nicely. So I added some water into this thing to test out if it really is potassium carbonate or hydroxide. And the water turned into this blurry brownish color. Well, due to the organic impurities mostly. So now just add some red cabbage indicator into this thing to see what color it becomes. And as you can see, the red cabbage indicator is becoming very green. So very kind of yellowish, if anything. So by adding the pH indicator, the solution initially became a greenish color, and then it became a yellow color. I'm guessing this is because, like, the pH didn't have time to register. So I transferred it into another flask to make it more visible, and as you can see, it really is yellow. What this means, that this is a massive success, and this thing is basically crawling with potassium ions, so it's hellishly concentrated with potassium carbonate or hydroxide. This means this is a big success. So yeah, once again, this is how we make potassium carbonate or hydroxide, and that's it for this video. Don't accidentally dissolve yourself in this stuff. See ya.